We'll start with the video that makes everybody feel good. Woo! And we're not alone in our love for the slopes. Ready to rip, skipped out of work. Across the country, winter sports make up a $20 billion industry, an industry that climate experts and economists agree is grappling with a new enemy, climate change. What will happen? You know, where's my livelihood uh, in the future? In recent years, headlines across the country have started shedding more light on this growing fear. This piece from CNBC citing erratic snowfall totals and weak starts to the ski season in famous hubs like Vail, Colorado. How undependable winter weather is becoming. In fact, according to a letter published by researchers at the University of Arizona, between 1982 and 2016, the snow season across the western half of of the U.S. decreased by an average of 34 days. And the amount of snow in the West has seen an average drop of 41 percent. The point? Well, check out this Bloomberg piece from a few months ago. The title, A Skier's Guide to Climate Change. Enjoy it for now. So those headlines are enough to scare any ski bum, any snow lover. So we thought we would kind of narrow this down and check in basically with the local bigwigs in the ski industry and ask them, is climate change shortening the season here on Mount Hood? The answer? Um, I wouldn't say that it's shrinking. At least at Mount Hood Meadows? Because our opening day always seems to be right around Thanksgiving. Not yet. They're high enough in elevation, topping out at 7,300 feet, that they're safe for now. But we don't know what the next 10 years or 20 years or 30 years are going to bring. That in mind, they've already started finding ways to mitigate the impact. Thank you. To prove it, the VP of Marketing took us to meet Jeremy Evans, their Director of Fleet Operations. Um, hey, Maggie. Nice, nice to meet you. And he showed us this. That's a giant bed that staff are welding together. They'll use it to cart snow that falls early in the season from the parking lot up to the slopes. You guys are like, forgive me, but like elves working behind the scenes <laughs> to like make this winter wonderland happen. Totally. Meadows sent us video of their crews doing this during past seasons. They call it harvesting snow. And then when we get more natural snow, we're actually building the base instead of using those initial snowfalls to build a base and wait until the next snow comes before we can start operating. So this machine is the first uh, dump dump bed cat that we had. This is what the bed will look like when it's attached to a snow cat. What he's building in there's got about another two feet in size on this bed, so we should be able to have quite a bit more capacity. You see, when Meadows started doing this during the 2014-2015 seasons, they only harvested snow with one vehicle. This year, they're upping their fleet to three. It was beautiful up there. This as resorts figure out more ways to make money independent of... This as resorts figure out more ways to make money independent of how much snow they get. They're selling snowshoe tours on the weekends and letting visitors mountain bike during the summer. Both Timberline and Ski Bowl opened trails up this year and posted promotional videos like these on YouTube to spread the word. All the while, Meadows is building a $15 million event space and restaurant. Beginning in December of 2020, Sahali will be climate-controlled and available year-round to host skiers and weddings alike. Staff here call it being proactive, getting ahead of the change. I'm Matt Spino. It has been a wet afternoon. Forecasters, though, including our chief weather watcher here at KGW, have been tracking changes for years. And say, as somebody who's been watching our climate here for literally decades and also somebody who recreates in it. Right, as quite much often, as I can. As much yeah. as you can. <laughs> this week, Matt Safino let me pick his brain. Quickly, our focus turned to Mount Hood's lower elevations, particularly around the start of ski season. What I have seen um, is a, a trend towards the snow coming later in the year, whereas we'll get a lot of, say, heavy rain in November on relatively bare mountain ground. And that can lead to other problems like 
debris flows that wash out roads. We saw that on, on Mount Hood several times with Highway 35 in the last 10 years or so, 10, 20 years. Regionally, experts are watching those trends too. There are some at lower elevation that are probably going to feel the effects of climate change. Dr. Nick Bond is the climatologist for the state of Washington. He told me via Skype, climate change isn't just marching forward, it's speeding up. And the region's highest mountains and volcanoes, like the rest of the Northwest, will really see shifts in the second half of this century. We're looking at something like a degree, maybe two warming um, in the next couple of decades. But after that, another three to five degrees warming. And that's when, in his words, this part of the country will become a very different place. Our snowpack is going to be a lot less. Our, uh, from a water resources point of view, there's going to be probably a lot more floods in the winter. That the precip excuse me, the precipitation that falls will be more in the form of rain than snow, and less water to get us through the dry summer. All that in mind, there was one last person we met at Mount Hood Meadows this week, Heidi Lagosh, the resort's sustainability manager and a key figure behind this letter sent to Oregon's state legislature earlier this year. It came on behalf of several ski industry leaders on Mount Hood, including Timberline and Ski Bowl, and it urged lawmakers to pass a list of bills designed to fight climate change. Lagosh says resorts are working so hard here to lessen the impacts of climate change, it only felt right to join the fight off the slopes. I'm really proud of the efforts of the leadership of Mount Hood Meadows. It's one thing to recycle and do things that are kind of easy. You can turn off power and use less water, but it really takes a lot to, to use your voice to make a difference. And we're really hoping that what we're doing by using our voice is making a difference. We thank Mount Hood Meadows for being so open about this. I wasn't sure if they would want to talk about it, something that, you know, has the propensity to hurt their product in the near future. But they said basically right now a couple of things they want to make clear. And this is backed up by climatologists as well. They're so high in elevation on the mountain. We're talking about one of the largest mountains in the country yeah. here in the Pacific Northwest. So elevation keeps them safe for quite a while. And then again, climatologists, including Chief Meteorologist Matt Safino, who we'll hear from in a second, also point out there's so much variability year to year. The trend is absolutely climate change is impacting ski season, but you're going to see a lot of fluctuation as we always have uh, in the years to come. But what's clear is that this issue affects so many parts of our lives. Absolutely. Just another just one yeah. part. Yeah, really. Exactly. Yes. Another example. And we rely so much on that snowpack around here that that's really a concern. We do. We take it for granted and it impacts us in so many ways. I mean, we're talking about the most visible one and the one that we all get excited about every year. But yeah, again, that impacts wildfires, our ecosystems, a whole host of examples there. Thank you, Maggie. You're really interesting. You're welcome.